we see that the messengers of Allah mainly spoke about two things spiritual awakening and they spoke about social reform no one is worthy of worship but Allah so this was the aim of all the messengers of Allah to come and rejuvenate the dead spirituality of the people to come and redirect humanity to the right path and this was the message of all the messengers of Allah brother Yasser Fazaga, he would be speaking on the topic activism for change. As far as brother Yasser Fazaga is concerned, he is an inspiring multilingual speaker sought after from USA through Canada to the Middle East and Far East. He has a bachelor's degree in Islamic studies from Islamic Arabic sciences in Virginia, USA, in addition to his master's degree in psychotherapy from the California State University of Long Beach. At present, Brother Yasser is undertaking his master's in theology at Loyola Marymount University. He serves as the Imam, the religious leader of the Orange Country Islamic Foundation in Mission Vijo, California. He is involved as a therapist in spaces where he helps families with different challenges in life, which include domestic violence issues, communication problems, marital matters generation gap, difficult teens, mental and personality disorders, divorce, grief, and single parenting, among others. Yasser Fazaga has taught the Arabic language and Islamic sciences for the past eight years and has taught Islamic courses on spiritual exegesis and Islamic financial contracts for American Open University. Brother Yasser has done numerous interviews about Islam on television news stations and radio stations around the globe. He speaks on Islam and related topics for conferences, churches, high schools, colleges, and universities. He also participates on behalf of his foundation in many outreach and interfaith events. Brother Yasser has this charismatic ability to instantly connect with audiences through his lucid wit and profound wisdom his timely humor and the warmth that his presence exudes. Though married a month back, he was kind enough to accede to our request to come to Mumbai along with his wife and uplift his activism for Dawa. Alhamdulillah. To speak today in a contemporary context on the topic, activism for change, brothers and sisters, Let's all once again welcome back on stage Brother Yasser Fazaga. الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء أطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يقه قولي All praises due to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I begin by greeting my brothers in Islam. I have brothers and sisters who may not be of the Muslim faith, my brothers and sisters in humanity with the greetings of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us many stories in the Quran related to the messengers that he has sent. And these stories that the Quran tells us about these great men are not bedtime stories. They are not the sake of entertainment, but rather these are stories that we are supposed to learn from. And when we look into the stories of the messengers of Allah, we see that the messengers of Allah mainly 
spoke about two things. They spoke about a spiritual awakening and they spoke about social reform. Spiritual awakening. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ إِلَّا رِجَالًا نُوحِ إِلَيْهِمْ أَلَّا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ and we have not sent before you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but men with the message of la ilaha illallah. No one is worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was the aim of all the messengers of Allah. To come and rejuvenate the dead spirituality of the people. To come and redirect humanity to the right path. To come and to liberate people from all the nonsense beliefs that they held back then and bring them into the light of Islam. Have and show them a proper way to have a proper relationship with their creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was the message of all the messengers of Allah. Spiritual awakening. Correcting the message that was corrupted either by clergymen or by the passage of time or the fact that sometimes people were fooled into it. But nevertheless, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent these messengers to reawaken people and to have this spiritual awakening. However, equally as important as this spiritual awakening that the messengers of Allah were bringing to people who were spiritually bankrupt is this idea of social reform. The messengers of Allah came and they taught. They came and they preached. But their preaching and their talks and their education did not stop only at La ilaha illallah. They brought something else with it. They did not stop there. So I'll give you a few examples. Musa alayhi salam. Moses, peace be upon him. When he came to people, he did invite them to La ilaha illallah. But that was not it. One thing about the messengers, the messengers are sent from the masses of the people to speak on behalf of the masses of the people. Because most of the time, it is the elites who do the talk. And when the elites talk in the Quran, you better pay attention because they are about to lie. Every time the elites open their mouth, they are about to lie. So you pay attention to what it is that they will be saying. And every time they open their mouth, they sound as if they are speaking on behalf of the masses, but they are not speaking on behalf of the masses. They're only speaking on their own behalf. They may sound that they are talking for the benefit of the masses, but that is not the reality. The elites only speak for the benefit of their own selves. So here comes Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam is calling people to la ilaha illallah. But there is something else that is taking place during the time of Musa alayhi salam, besides the spiritual bankruptcy that people are going through, there is political tyranny. A group of people is being marginalized. A group of people is being exploited. A group of people is being downtrodden. Somebody is stepping on them. Somebody is exploiting them. Musa alayhi salam cannot come and say, have a proper relationship with your creator but he will not say anything about the rotten condition that the people are going through people would not listen okay so i believe in your god what else are you bringing into the table what else are you saying on my behalf so musa alayhi salam came on the one hand he is teaching people la ilaha illallah but also on the other hand musa alayhi salam is speaking on behalf of the mass whom they had their humanity and their human dignity and integrity jeopardized and compromised. In the example of Fir'aun, what we see here is the epitome of dictatorship. Musa alayhi salam comes in and he cannot be silent in front of this. He cannot see the wrong in front of him and does not address it. So Musa alayhi salam goes and talks to Fir'aun. And by the way, one of the most beautiful debates that take place in the Quran is the debate that takes place between Musa alayhi salam and Fir'aun. Give you one example. Allah commands Harun and Musa to speak softly to Fir'aun and to speak tenderly to him, lest that Fir'aun may have a change of a heart and become a better person. And if Pharaoh becomes a better person, then you can count on the entire state of Egypt to become better people as well. 
So here comes Musa alayhi salam and he speaks very nice to Fir'aun and he invites him. Inna rasula rabbik. Inna, we are the messengers, both of us, Harun and Musa. We are the messengers of your Lord. They're making it a very personal invitation. They did not say, we have been sent by our Lord. No, they're saying, we have been sent by your Lord, Fir'aun. In a sense, they are confronting him. But also in a sense, they're saying that Allah is equally interested in you as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is interested in us. He is still your Lord, Fir'aun. You better heed to this and you better pay attention. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all those who follow the right guidance. made the Quran easy to understand and remember. Then, is there any that will receive admonition? Learn the language of the Creator's last testament in learning Quranic Arabic in Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Allahu Akbar It is easier to practice Islam with a better understanding. A systematic and simplified approach would eliminate confusion. So join me as I discuss the practical yet simple steps to understand Islam. Join Hatham Al Haddad in Principles of Understanding Islam next on Peace TV. Are the messengers both of us Harun and Musa we are the messengers of your Lord they're making it a very personal invitation they did not say we have been sent by our Lord no they're saying we have been sent by your Lord Fir'aun in a sense they are confronting him but also in a sense they're saying that Allah is equally interested in you as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is interested in us he is still your Lord Fir'aun you better heed to this and you better pay attention. Wassalamu ala man al huda. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all those who follow the right guidance. Fir'aun was a shrewd politician. Fir'aun was a very smart man. So how did he reject this invitation? Qala, Faman rabbukuma ya Musa? Instead of inquiring, and who is this Lord of mine, o Moses? He said, and who is your Lord? He is not mine. He is only your Lord. Fair question, disrespectful, impolite, but it's a fair question. And here comes the answer from Musa alayhi salam. Qala rabbuna alladhi a'ta illa shay'in khalqahu thumma hada. He said, our Lord is the one who has created everything, gave it its proper form, and gave it guidance. Now this answer to Fir'aun was very puzzling. How does he respond to this now? He claims to be God, yet Musa alayhi salam is introducing a very different concept of God, the creator of everything, the one who has shaped everything, the one who has given due measure to everything. How can I compete with this? Listen to what this shrewd, wicked politician does. He completely changes the subject. And what does he say? What about the previous generations? You look into the dialogue and you say, wait a minute, this man is not following. We're talking about God. Why is he all of a sudden jumping and asking about previous nations? Why is he bringing this? See, many times, this is what politicians do. Distraction. They distract. They immediately change the subject. But Salihi Salam knows what's happening. Fir'aun asks, he said, what about the previous generations? Are you going to tell me that our forefathers were lost? Are you going to say that our great-grandparents were misguided? Are you going to tell this to the masses? How will the masses feel if they were told that all their great-grandparents
parents were misguided, how will they feel? Musa alayhi salam was an extremely smart man. He does not go that route. So what does he say? قَالَ عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي فِي كِتَابٍ لَا يَضِلُّ رَبِّي وَلَا يَنْسَى He said the knowledge of these generations is with my Lord in a book where my Lord neither errs nor does he forget. So I said change the subject. But really let's go back to that previous statement that you said. You are inquiring about Allah. Let me give you more information about Allah. But the point is this. Musa alayhi salam sees this oppression taking place and he was not silent about it. All the messengers of Allah were engaged in the reality of their times. They were head on confronting the challenges and the problems of their times. They did not go back and try to bring up a challenge from a hundred years back. No, we're talking about today's challenges and we are going to confront today's challenges. Another example would be Prophet Lut alayhi salam. Lut alayhi salam comes to his people and his message is clear. His message is worship none but Allah. And this is the spiritual awakening aspect of it. But during the time of Lut alayhi salam, there was also so another problem that was taking place, not that only the people were spiritually bankrupt, but the people are also now morally bankrupt. Indecency is taking place, sexual immorality is taking place. Lut alayhi salam comes and he sees the social ills of his community and he is not quiet about it. What does he do? He tells people, he invites people to la ilaha illallah, but he also tells people, we need social reform. Morality is bringing the entire community down. I preach la ilaha illallah, but at the same time, part of la ilaha illallah is that I have to confront the ills of my society as they are happening today. So he speaks about it. He comes out and he confronts his people. And he speaks against their behavior. He speaks against their wicked ways of life. And we can learn so much about Lut alayhi salam and from Lut alayhi salam in the days that we are living today where sexual immorality is the norm. If you want to sell anything, use sex. You want to sell Tylenol, your advertising, your commercial must be sexually appealing to people. You want to sell soda, make it sexually appealing. You want to sell a bed in the hospital, make it sexually appealing. Somehow they are able to put sex in every aspect, in every place to sell. And you see this and you say, but wait a minute. You are dragging, you are making us morally corrupt. You are objectifying women. You are commodifying women. You're using them as a commodity. We will not be quiet about this. We are going to speak against this, as Lut alayhi salam has done. We see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he does, he preaches to people, la ilaha illallah, and remember this is the spiritual awakening part of it, but the teaching of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not stop there. Social reform needs to take place. People are being wrongly enslaved. Women are wrongly oppressed. The weak are marginalized. Nobody speaks on their behalf. Nobody has to say about their destiny. Somebody else is making the decision for them where they have no say about anything. People can wage war and stop war at will and the masses have no say. They are asked to fight. They're the first to sacrifice and they are the last to benefit from anything. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam comes and he speaks on behalf of these masses. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and he speaks against alcoholism. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes and he speaks against the exploitation of the poor and the needy. He comes and he speaks against the infanticide that was taking place. In fact, in the fourth year of Ba'tha, as his companions are persecuted and tortured and marginalized and all the terrible things that are happening to them, what does the Quran reveal? Have you seen the one who belies religion? Who's the one that belies religion? 
You would think that the one that belies religion is the one that does not pray, does not believe in the day of judgment. The Quran goes and takes a totally different route. Who is the person that belies religion? The Quran tells us, It is he or she who repels the orphan with harshness. وَلَا يَحُضُّ عَلَى طَعَامِ الْمِسْكِينَ And he does not encourage the feeding of the poor and the needy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Somebody is considered to be a person that belies religion because they're being rude to the orphan, because they did not encourage the feeding of the poor and the needy. This is a deen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the teachings of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He comes in and this is what he teaches. Another example that we're going to spend a little time with is the example of Prophet Shu'aib alayhi salam. In the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam calls him Khatibul Anbiya, the orator of the messengers. Because of how compelling his argument is. The Quran tells us this story in Surah Hud where it says, وَإِلَىٰ مَدْيَنَ أَخَاهُمْ شُعَيْبَ And to the people of Medan, we sent them their brethren Shu'aib. The people of Median had a very, geographically speaking, a very strategic location where caravans and business and, and transactions were taking place around their town. And they knew the strategic location of their town, so they used to take advantage of the people. They used to exploit the people. Shu'aib alayhi salam, like all other messengers, he comes to them and what does he say? Qala ya ma lakum min ilahin he said, oh my people, Worship Allah, for you have no other true God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship Him. Spiritual awakening. You are spiritually bankrupt, and I am going to awaken this in you. But by the way, you are also becoming morally bankrupt. What are you guilty of? Shu'aib alayhi salam speaks to his people and he says, وَلَا تَنْقُصُ الْمِكْيَالَ وَالْمِيزَانَ He said, do not shortchange people. Do not lessen in measure or in weight. Inni arakum bi khair. I see you in prosperity. You don't need to exploit more. You already have enough. Don't take advantage of the poor and the needy. What you have is enough for you. Wa inni akhafu alaykum azaba yawmin muhir. And I fear for you the chastisement of an encompassing day. Shu'ar alayhi salam does not stop there. He goes on with his people and what does he say? Wa ya qawmi. Oh my people, give in just, in due measure and weight that which belongs to people. And do not shortchange people. Do not deprive people of that which belongs to them. And do not go around the earth intending mischief. That which you earn in a proper way, a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approves of, is what is best for you. But if you only people believe me. Shu'aib alayhi salam goes on with his people going back and forth. And then they start mockery of him. Or he said, oh Shu'aib, are your prayers telling you to tell us not to do in our wealth as we please, freedom? Shu'aib alayhi salam goes on and he tells them about his ethics of about bringing change. To bring change is mandatory. To bring change and to eradicate the evil, you cannot use evil means. You cannot eradicate evil with evil. You can only eradicate evil with things that are better than evil. So Shu'aib alayhi salam tells them his plan. How does he plan to bring about this change? What does he say? Qala ya qawmi, araaytum in kuntu ala bayinatim min rabbi. Said to begin with, oh my people, won't you consider the following? I have been given clear signs from my Lord. I don't say these things to make you look bad. I don't say these things to put you down. I am here, I have been sent by Allah. I am just fulfilling an obligation that I was commanded to do by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So please hear me out. Hear me out.
Islamic International School presents Spreading the Truth Clarifying the Message Islam requires mutual relationship not only among Muslims but also with the respect of other people Focusing on the ultimate goal We are not going to stay here forever but the real home is Jannah Treading the path of real success Every Muslim should remember the justice of Islam. Presentations by the young orators of Islamic International School. I stand before you with Maryam Armar, Saad Deti, Ammar Allapur, Tasneem Dahl, Ms. Bah Sayyad, Sara Nuri.